Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. I hope you're having a great day and making it an awesome one. It's easy to add motion from left to right or vice versa in an image, right? And we already have a video about it. Right over here, you can watch it. Now it's also easy to add motion to your image when the motion is from the center or even if it is slightly off, we can simply add a radial blur and it will be good to go. However, the difficulty or challenge comes when there's a motion that is along a complex perspective. And that's what we're going to tackle in this video. We will also learn how to add specific measurements or different values of motion in different areas of the image. Have you ever noticed whenever you're traveling in a car and you look outside the window, the objects that are closer to you seems to go by way faster than the objects which are further away, like the mountains or the sky, the clouds in the sky, of course. The point is we cannot add the same blur all throughout. It just wouldn't look realistic. And that's what we're going to learn in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical and brilliant world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now, the very first objective we have here is to blur the background. To do that, make the copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Actually, make two copies. Press Ctrl or Command J twice. The first copy will have just the car and the second copy will have just the background so that we can treat them differently. So with the car layer, we need to make the selection of the car first. So you can use any of your favorite tools to make a selection. I already have a selection. I used the pen tool to do it. So I loaded my selection because once you create a path with the pen tool, the path is going to show up here. To make a selection of that path, hold the control key or the command key and just click on the thumbnail of the path. and. There you have the selection. Now you can also use the quick selection tool, the object selection tool. It's up to you. Once you have the selection in place, you can click on the mask button. All right. Now this layer just has the car. The background layer just beneath it has the car and also has the background. We just want the background in it. And for that, we have to remove the car from it. A lot of times we might make the mistake of blurring the background with the car in it. This can create a ghosting effect. Let me share with you a quick example. If I were to just simply blur it by going to filter, blur and then motion blur. And this is just to show you what would happen. And let's add a simple motion blur and hit OK. The problem is the car also gets blurred and shows up in the background. If I turn this on, see, it just isn't looking realistic and it's creating a ghosting effect. All right. So to avoid that, we have to remove the car from this background layer so that when we blur it, parts of the car don't show up in the blur. All right. To do that, first of all, again, bring up the selection of the car, hold the control key or the command key. It's already in the mask. So click on the mask. We have the selection. Now let's expand the selection by going to select, modify and then expand. Expand it by about 50 pixels. That's fine. Or even let's go a little lower because we want Photoshop to have more information to fill that area. So let's go for about 25. This seems to be about right. Now let's go to edit content aware fill. Now inside of that, you can choose which areas would you like Photoshop to sample from. So on the left hand side, you can paint green over the areas where you want Photoshop to sample from. So this seems to be about right because anyway, this is going to be covered. Hit OK. As long as it looks good, with the car layer turned on, this is going to be fine. Now, there are a couple artifacts right over here. Have a look, but uh, it won't matter much. Trust me, we're going to blur it anyway. So this layer is background without car. Now, let's convert both of these layers into a smart object so that whatever filter we apply, we will have the ability to change the values later. So with the background without car layer selected, let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Let's do the same with the car layer filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. If you want to access the mask, you can just double click on the thumbnail and here you can bring back any details you want later. Let's get back to our document. So with the background without car layer selected, now we're going to do the magic. Let's go to filter, blur gallery and path blur. First of all, here's the first path that we have. Let's delete it. Select the path, press the delete key and it's gone because we want to draw everything from scratch. So just along the perspectives, start drawing the paths. So one path from right here to there. All right. That looks about right. Now, if I increase the speed here, it just doesn't look realistic because there's a perspective thing going on in here. We need more paths. So let's decrease the speed all the way to zero so that we can work faster. And here we're going to draw another path along the perspective. See what we are doing here? Draw as many paths as you like. We have to be as accurate as possible. We just have to maintain the perspective. Now these lines clearly do define the perspective. All we have to do now is to just turn up the blur. So let's increase the speed and it's a better term actually. Let's increase the speed to about, let's say, let's go for about 300%. And the car is going at super fast speed. 
However, hold your horses though, there's an adjustment we need to make. If you look around the corner right over here, let me just decrease the blur back again, actually the speed, these areas shouldn't be moving as fast as these areas. And you would notice that when you're looking outside the car window, the area around the vanishing point doesn't move that fast. The area further away does not move that fast. So we have to have different speeds for this area and different speeds for this area. In other words, we have to gradually increase the speed from this point to this point. And how is that possible? Well, all you got to do is to first of all, let's increase the speed back to 300% and turn on edit blur shapes. Now, once you do that, you will begin to see these red arrows. And using this endpoint speed, you can control the speed of each point. <laughs> Isn't that pretty good? So for the right end, let's set it to about 400 pixels. See now, this end has more speed. And for the left end, let's just decrease it all the way to zero. We're going to do the same for all of the points. So again, for the left hand side, left end point, let's set it to about zero pixels, actually zero pixels, I didn't have to say about, and for the right one, 400 as usual. It helps if you just decrease the speed to zero and continue doing it, that way it's a little faster. Also, if you want, you can extend the points all the way outside the image. This will prevent any unnecessary artifacts. Now let's increase the speed back to 300% and suddenly the motion is just beautiful. You can always go for a little less if you wish. I feel like 120 is a good number. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Now the advantage here is you can always change these values later. At this point I have to admit, my computer is just crying. Crying out loud with her fans. So yeah, gotta wait, let her cry a little bit and then uh, we'll continue. Now have a look, this looks a little more realistic because at this point there's not as much blur as compared to this area. Now there's one more thing that we need to deal with. Have a look at the car, it has so much noise, but with the blur, <laughs> there is just no noise there. And here comes the advantage of smart objects. We can always go back to the blur gallery by double clicking here and just click on the noise tab right here. Let's zoom in and adjust the noise. Increase the amount from right here. As you can see, the noise is added, but this noise in the car is a little more fine. So let's try to decrease the size and see if we can match that. And there you go. It's perfectly matching. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And there you have it. Now have a look. The noise is so seamlessly and nicely matching here. Now, as I can notice, the underside of the car here is a little more brighter. And that's because of the content of air fill that we just added. No problem with that. We can simply add a curves adjustment layer and darken that up. Dark enough, right? Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask, then take the brush with white as the foreground color, just paint back those areas where it looks weird. There we go, fixed. There we go, fixed. As simple as that. Curves fixes everything. Now the car surely is in motion, but it's not a hovercraft, so it has to do something to make it go. In this case, it has wheels. So if the wheels are rotating, there has to be a little blur over there as well. You don't have to be accurate with it. Just select the car layer. Let's go to filter, blur gallery, and then spin blur. We're going to make the wheel spin, right? So let's bring the spin on the top of the wheel. As I said, you don't have to be accurate and keep all the 3D objects in mind because there's a lot of filters that we can add on top of that. And by the end of it, we just won't even be able to notice. So let's make the circle a little smaller and adjust it so that it takes the shape of the wheel. You don't have to worry about everything, just worry about the rim. Let's click on blur tools and increase or decrease the angle according to your preferences. I feel like this is going to be enough. Now, let's click on noise and let's add the same amount of noise. So in its 30s, and also we need to decrease the size to match it. Now, how can we forget the rear wheel, especially if it's a rear wheel drive? Well, let's get back. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it a front wheel drive? Maybe it is. I don't know. Click one more time to add another blur circle. Of course, we need to make it smaller and adjust it according to the wheel. Now, with this blur, though, there's an issue. It also blurs the body of the car. Don't you worry about it. We got it covered. Just hit OK. And by the way, with all that noise, we cannot even tell. Anyway, just select the mask of the smart filters. Keep in mind, smart filters do come with a mask. Take the brush, black as the foreground color. Just erase it away from the body. And paint back the wheel area a little bit. And there we have our car in motion. Now let's add a fake effect that adds real fun to the image. And that is, how about we add a flash-like blur to the car? 
Wouldn't that be cool? So make the copy of the car layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And for this one, you don't really have to have spin blur here. You can just take the smart filters and drop it into the trash can. Let's name this one Flash Blur. Now let's go to Filter, Blur Gallery and again, Path Blur. And this time the blur is going to be a little different. First of all, let's set the direction backwards. Now if you go to the Blur Tools and inside of Path Blur, first of all, we can turn off Edit Blur Shapes to make it cleaner. Now let's set the path this way. Now again, the car is following a perspective in itself, so we need more than one line. Now to add the kind of blur where the details of the car is also a little bit intact, from the drop down of the path blur, change it from basic blur to rear sync flash. And suddenly, the blur style changes. Have a look at this. So this is the basic blur. All the details are gone. If you change it to rear sync flash, it really looks like flash. Now similarly in this case, we will adjust the endpoint speeds. So let's turn on edit blur shapes. Click on that and set it to zero and do it for all of these points. Now the fun part is, the blur in this wheel is not as much as the one on the rear. And this gradual blur is what makes it realistic. Now at the back end point, let's set it to about 350. Now you can choose the number of your choice. This is what I like. Once you're satisfied with the effect, just hit OK. Now it is no more a classic car, it's a Bugatti. Anyway, let's decrease the opacity of this layer, the flash blur layer, to about 50 or 60%. Let's go for 60 and now we have added a little more motion to it. Now the motion is done. You can stop watching the video right over here. However, now we will just proceed to learn about little lighting techniques to make it more dramatic. With a little bit of color grading of course. And by the way, the effects that we're gonna add here, I was inspired to add these effects from none other than the game Need for Speed Most Wanted. It was the first game that was so realistic, it just blew my mind. Now keep in mind, I was playing it eight years ago, so by that standards. The kind of highlights and reflections it had was just out of the world for that time. So similarly in this example, we will add a little highlight on the road. For that, let's create a curves adjustment layer just above the background layer. So let's create a curve and take the rightmost slider to the left. You can also hold the Alt key or the Option key while you do that. And just at the point where we begin to lose details on the road, we can stop. Just at this point, I feel. Let's go a little more softer. This seems to be about right. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, and with the soft round brush and white as the foreground color, just dab in the middle. Don't go near the edge. Now press Ctrl or Command T, and now we have to adjust it accordingly. Hold the Shift key to flatten it all up, and bring it right under the car. Make it a little larger. Now we can get back to the curve and make it a little more extreme. You can even blur it more if you want. You can go to the mask properties and simply feather it even more. Let's go for 150. Now we only want this effect in the bright areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and let's take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer by taking the slider of the left to the right, just like this. Now hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart. This makes it more realistic. Now we want to keep the shadows intact, keep that in mind. Hit OK. And there you have it. Here's the before, here's the after. See that punch it adds? Now you can even go a little more if you wish, but I'm going to stop here. Now I believe we can do a little more brightening. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer and just take it up like this. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now just paint over the road, all over this time. All right, now we need to take it away from the buildings and stuff. With black as the foreground color, just dab once on one side, hold the Shift key, dab on the other side. So it creates a straight line. Have a look at the mask. Now you can erase the extras. Again, in this case, double click on the right hand side of the layer and add a little blend if. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, break it apart. Click on it to break it apart. And there you have a little more highlight. So here's the before, no drama at all. Here's the after, some more drama. Now we need to draw the attention of the viewer towards the car and our attention automatically goes towards the brightest areas of the image. So let's create another curves at the very top just increase it. We don't want to brighten the shadows, so let's bring the shadows down. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, white as the foreground color, and just dab above the car with a soft round brush. Let's decrease the opacity to about 75%, and there you go, just a little spotlight adds more attention to the car. Also, the sky is too bright, so we need to darken that as well. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. I know, lots of curves. Take it down a bit. Now select the mask, this time choose the gradient tool and let's create a gradient from white to black. 
So let's draw a gradient like this, or maybe let's also darken the buildings a bit. Now, if I create a gradient like this, the car might also darken a bit. Have a look, it is just having its effect there. So no problem, let's bring this layer under the car. That's all we gotta do. And there you go, now the car is not affected. And finally, let's use color grading to add a little more drama to it. And the easiest way to do that is simply use a LUT. So, create a color lookup adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing color lookup. And for these scenes, especially to mimic the Need for Speed most wanted daylight scenes, we're gonna go with crisp warm, one of my favorite LUTs. Let's choose that and it automatically becomes just so amazingly good. I feel that it's too harsh on the shadows, so double click on the right hand side of the layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, and take it away from the shadows all throughout. Now, a little bit on the shadow is also looking good, so make a copy of that by pressing Ctrl or Command J, that way it will apply doubly on the highlights and a little bit on the shadow, and it just so beautifully boosts the drama in the image. Let's go for 75% opacity. And there you have it, my friend. So beautiful, isn't it? So here is the before. Not interesting at all. And just look at the after. So that's how to add motion with complex perspectives. Clearly, the star of the show here is definitely Path Blur. Let's do a quick little recap. First of all, make two copies of the image. On one layer, just have the background, remove the subject. On the other layer, just have the subject. In this case, it's the car. Now apply path blur to the background, create multiple paths according to the perspective and also don't forget to adjust the end point speeds. Where the blur starts, have them at zero and as it goes up, you can have a different speed, a higher speed. Similarly, you can apply a little bit of that blur onto the car and just add a copy of that with a lower opacity and you will have the motion effects. Also do not forget, unless it's a hoverboard, you will have moving parts in your subject that is visible. For a car in this case, it was the wheels. If you're working with a helicopter, that would be the blades. If you're working with a running human, that would be the legs and the arms, right? So blur those as well, don't forget to do that. And after you're done with this, you can use whatever technique you want with curves, color lookup tables, hue saturation, you can use dodging and burning to just add some color and drama to your image. Also, when you're adding the blur inside of Blur Gallery dialog box, there's a section for adding noise. You might have to add a little bit of noise to match with that of the existing subject. So that's all there is for this video. I hope this video helped you in some way or the other. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next fun. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.